So we met in 2014 in Berlin, and we started to do videos together by setting some cameras around our apartment and just recording all our improvised actions. And at some point, when we got an invitation to do a performance together, we had an idea that we would just translate this video setting onto the performance. So actually, from the film recording, we established the performance practice. Yeah, we really often, you know, we really often started, um, you know, looking at our direct environment, surrounding, and like a lot of the activities really came from like domestic actions at home, working with what we got and very simple, you know, software and stuff like that. And then when we took those conversations from the kitchen to the streets in a way, um, that's been something that we really tried to like, uh, you know, um, really stress within our performances that um, really often it's like bringing, bringing intimate details, bringing intimate narratives to wider audiences and bringing that to the public space. That's been something really of interest to us. I think like getting to know each other more and more over the years, it's been always uh, interesting to us to like look at you know the differences and the similarities that there are in our cultures and uh, finding out that a lot of that has to do with like you know um, shared beliefs, religions, and like perceptions on like what is going on in the world. We really realize that a lot of that you know um, has to do with certain archetypes that are being perpetuated or reestablished. So uh, oftentimes we've been looking at like Filipino. Um, mythology, folklore, that obviously is really inspired by like deities, but also like Christian beliefs, and that also really exists in um, the Polish culture. And in a wider sense, if you look at like paganism, um, you do have that a lot in Slavic culture as well. A little anecdote. I remember, for example, when we were performing for the first time in Warsaw at the Museum of Modern Art, um, we came up with a performance that was called The Accursed Ones. And in that performance, we, you know, did some sort of like act cleansing ritual um, that was based on a memory that I had with my grandma rubbing, you know, an egg over my body whenever I was sick and I could never really understand why she was doing that because uh, it felt to me, you know, it seemed to be some sort of like voodoo practice to me, but it really, you know, um, was some sort of like cultural clash between like uh, Christian religion and uh, yeah, well, voodoo practices. And then you told me that it also exists in the Slavic culture, and that was pretty interesting. You know, um, then we used those things um, and uh, applied them to like choreography and like the script break. Right? very inspired by the practices like theater practices established by visual artists and uh, the most fascinating moment in this history was actually post-war area when artists just 
collected themselves into some sort of groups and decided to establish house or apartment theaters. And it had a lot to do also with the recent pandemic situation when it was not allowed to perform in the public or go out in the public. So we were also trying to establish structures in apartments uh, to, to execute some sort of theater pieces. That's why this uh, German and Polish post-war theater uh, was such a big inspiration for us. Especially here, I think it's worth to mention Tadeusz Kantor, the Polish theater maker of Bertolt Brecht. And um, those, those practices of combining all sorts of arts into one Gesamtkunstwerk, one big art piece, was super static for us because also our practices consist from so many different mediums like painting, video making performance. So this sort of a theater was like a good accumulation of all of them. Forced migrants. Refugees. Child laborers. And all the humans to whom the citizens' rights have been denied. The only thing worse than that was probably the arrival of the Black Death in medieval Europe. population has been decimated. Tragic, you may say. <laughs> Some people think that our lives have actually gotten better. Less people. More jobs. Less opportunities. More benefits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, why there were power created? You tell me. My name is Thomas Münzer. I am a radical protestant and the leader of Bauernkrieger, the peasant world. Humor makes our work much more digested and also humor was always this thing that in the most humanizing moments kept humans being human and that was for me to discover that that in the most terrible situation we keep on making and inventing jokes and turning the absurd of the world into some sort of a fun thing and that's what kept us 
surviving and being alive. So this discovery made me think that this is some sort of a crucial thing that art also should use. And uh, in order to be vulnerable and also in order to know how to deal with this vulnerability so it doesn't really swallow us. But you might wonder what vampires are doing today. We attempt public protest. <laughs> <coughs> the main street of a big city. We are shaking, but not because it's cold, it's just because we're scared. Alexander told me that police officers had tear guns. Veronica has tears in her eyes. And some guy behind us said, Don't worry, guys. I have this special medical water, so if a police officer sprays a tear gas into your face, just ask me, we will put it directly into your eyes, and we don't even need to call the medical support. Do you want some hibiscus? And I hate, 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 hate what the Anglo-Saxon culture did to us. They turned us into some sort of an old noble man who lives in a rotten castle and needs to suck blood of his peasants in order to survive. Exactly as capitalism does. Living in a castle. Drinking blood. Da da da. Down in the Marrying my castle. Drinking blood. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that humor is just like so complex because it's so relational and like, you know, it entails so many different uh, understandings of the situation. And um, I think that humor, in fact, is really subversive because it can be some sort of like Trojan horse where, you know, you bring a really important topic, some, some concern into the uh, discussion without being too in your face where you probably would otherwise, you know, um, kind of like, yeah, people would like probably not even listen to you, but like with humor, you can kind of like get into a discussion and I think that's something where generations can meet and like um and uh it's very telling, you know, what we laugh about. Like there are certain things that are really universal but also very culturally specific things and that's why you are such a complex thing and I think um satire, prestige, all of those things also really often using newspaper and propaganda, that's something that we're really interested in. Um in like, you know, the way it plays with like authority, respect, reputation, and uh, in that sense, humor is pretty subversive and interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just dancing in front of the protest. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't you needed? We need to let the drivers. Check them? Can you check them? <laughs> well, sometimes when we have this car with the speaker on top, then yes, I can also be happy with the driver. <laughs> 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 what did you 
Theater in itself was always something that we really looked into because um, we have a deep interest in like um, you know post-colonial theater because our performances are really like you know, spoken word based and like very you know um, language heavy let's say and we're really often thinking about like what language to use like who you know who are we addressing and and how far can you like gain something from like maybe uh, trying to. Um, break the rhythm a little and like not use, you know, Anglo-Saxon culture, cultural references or English all the time, but, you know, rather, I don't know, for example, really often use Polish elements and Tagalog, Filipino language, and then, you know, um, visually um, translating that rather than just like using the main, you know, or the, uh, the main language in use in the um, cultural field. And that's um, something that I think can lead to like interesting subversion and like actually show you the potential of like listening to language as sound, as dramaturgical element, um, rather than just like, you know, um, purely descriptive content. Yeah. And uh, we're really into like linguistics, you know, language in itself is pretty arbitrary. If you talk about like a tree here, you know, um, in the Philippines, you'd maybe think about like a palm tree, like in Europe, you would think about like a Christmas tree. That kind of stuff is really interesting to us. Yeah. We need a new language. We need a new language. We need a new language. A language they don't get. A language they don't get. A language they don't get. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. I hear the sound of victory. For victory is creation. For victory is creation. For victory is creation. We need a new language. We need a new language. I think that like art or like you know, visual culture in itself is something that really shows how, you know, we draw from like, certain registers that are, you know, established by certain people and like then referring to these things, I think it's pretty interesting to see how uh, a lot of that has been shaped by like really recent uh, events. There's a certain type of like recency bias or revisionist approaches and I think that uh, art, what is really difficult sometimes is to put your finger on certain issues in the world and like that's uh, when art comes into play and like can you know um, where art can maybe give shape and face to certain you know problematics and issues we don't know such words as depression or trauma That's why we have a proposal.
let it be. More and more greasy. Let many insects live with it. Art is super important political tool, definitely. And because it's a tool, it can have so many different way of using it. And like with a hammer, you can nail a nail or you can also break the glass. So it's the same with art. For example, from my and I think also our perspective, art is a fantastic tool to rewrite history or to turn past into his history and uh, to expose the events that got erased or uh, characters that never made it into the common memory, uh, important and visible and audible. And that's this way or this tool that art can be is for us the most important. Look at the shore.